Okay, so welcome to the Unit 9, Lesson 4 video. Uh, in this video, we're going to look more at the normal distribution curve and at finding the probability of a data point or a z-score between two values. And we're also going to be able to work our way backwards. So using, once we have a probability or an area under the curve, we're going to work our way backwards to find a data point or a specific z-score. All right, so we're going to continue with that potato chip example where our mean was 12.4 and our standard deviation was 0.2. So, and a lot of times doing problems like this, drawing a little quick sketch is useful, right? So here's my sketch, here's my mean of 12.4, and here's one standard deviation, which would be 12.6, one standard deviation below, which would be 12.2, and then we have two standard deviations, 12.0, 12.8, we got 13 at three standard deviations, and 11.8 at three below. Okay, so that's kind of the general sketch that we had last time. And we looked at things such as between 12.2 and 12.6 being 68%, right? So we looked at those you know, general numbers that were easy, one standard deviation, two standard deviations above or below. But in this example, where we're trying to figure out 12.05 and 12.77, in those types of situations, those aren't nice z-score numbers per se. They're not negative one, they're not positive two they're gonna be more of a decimal answer. So we're gonna to have to find the probability, or also known as the area under the curve, and we're gonna to have to use the calculator. So, what we're gonna do here, and I'm gonna bring this up, bring up my calculator, in just one second. Okay, so I have my calculator here, and in the directions we, we lay out the button pushes that you're gonna do. What we're really looking at here is we're going to look at a normal CDF distribution. Uh, it's a function that will find the probability of falling between two boundaries according to a normal distribution. Um, and so if you have the TI-83, then you'll use the same buttons, but you're going to have to enter it in manually. The TI some of the TI-84 pluses are going to have a slightly different screen, such as the one you see here. Um, with more of a wizard. So let's follow along. If you have TI-83, let us know and we'll, we'll work with you. All right, so I'm gonna hit second bars so that if you see the blue, it says distribution up, up there. Scroll down one space to normal CDF. All right, we'll hit enter. And here's our little wizard that we're putting in. So the lower bound is the lowest you want. Um, in this case, I'm using 12.05 as my lower bound, and my upper bound is gonna be 12.77. And down here, the mean was 12.4, and the standard deviation was 0 0.2. So we'll paste that in, and again, that's more of what you'll see if you have a TI-83. Just hit enter again, and it gives us our area under the curve, the probability of getting something between 12.05 and 12.77. So 0.928, we'll use three decimal places for this. Um, so, which kind of makes sense, right? If we're thinking about this on the normal distribution curve, 12.77 is about 12.8. And then we're going to go over here to 12.05, which is just about there, right? So it's almost a little bit less than two standard deviations above and below, which two standard deviations is a 95% or 0.95, and this is a 0.928. Slightly smaller because it's a, just a little bit above 12 and just a little bit below 12.8. So hopefully that number of 0.928 makes sense to you. And now we have three problems here that I would like for you to try on your own. There's a couple of notes over here uh, to use a z-score rather than uh, the mean and the standard deviation 
because notice that these are z-scores, right? You don't have to change anything in your calculator. Or if you've already changed it, you have to change it back. Second, bars, CDF, right? So I'm going to have to change it back. But if you're using a z-score, the mean is always 0. The standard deviation is always 1, right? So it makes sense if you're given z-scores to use a z-score. If you're given data points, use this, the mean, the actual mean, the actual standard deviation. It just depends on what you're given, what you want to use. You'll get the same answer either way. So pause the video, try to do number one, number two, and number three, and then uh, I'll start the video back and you'll have your answers to make sure that you're correct. But try this on your own by pausing the video now. Okay, so here are the three answers you should get for number one, number two, and number three. And again, for number one and number two, here's two important aspects for when you're trying to you do a left bound or a right bound, right, greater than or equal to of a single number. You're probably going to use a negative 999999 just as a practical solution to infinity, or like 99999 as a practical solution to typing in infinity. If you just type in about six or seven nines, it's going to be sufficiently large enough to give you the approximate answer. All right, so there's your three probabilities for less than 1.86, for greater than 0.37, and for a z-score between negative 2.37 and 1.59. Okay, so, What's going to happen though, if I give you a percentile, or I give you a percentage, and I ask you to tell me what weight or what score gets you into that percentage, right? So we're still using the same thing, still using the bag of chips example. There's my normal distribution. We still have a normal, or mean of 12.4, standard deviation of 0.2. Okay, so uh, we want the top 10% of weights, right? The top 10% of weights. So I know that this is 13 and this is about 2.5, so my top 10% would be about right here, right? So I have about 10% here, which leaves me about 90% here. Now this is an important aspect because we can only measure what's to the left of the line. The calculator will calculate always to the left. It's always to the left. So if I want the top 10, I'm really going to calculate the bottom 90, right? So keeping that in mind, we're going to go back to second bars, back to our distribution, right? So we'll go down here to number three, which says inverse norm. Type that in. So the area under the curve is what we're looking for. I'm looking for the area equaling 0 0.90, right, or 0.9, whatever, 90%. Now, you could use the mean, which would give you a z-score, but what it asked me for was the actual weight. So I'm not going to find the z-score and then calculate it backwards. I'm just going to type in 12.4. And point two, save myself some work. So I, I got it all typed in. I entered and I got a weight of 12.656, or we're going to round that to 12.66 ounces. So 12.66 ounces will get me into the top 10%. Anything above 12.66 would be the top 10%. All right, and that's about where we had it drawn. Right, we had 12.6 here, and we we're slightly above that, and 12.66 is slightly above. 
So it should kind of make sense what we're doing here. The key, again, is to realize that the calculator only works to the left. So you got to read to make sure you're, you're doing the correct answer. All right? So our practice problems here you're going to be trying by yourself is ACT test in 2016 has a mean of 20.8 with a standard deviation of 4.8. So calculate the score that gets you in the 75th percentile, the 90th percentile, and the 98th percentile. So pause the video, do those calculations, and I'll come back with the answers for you after you've worked through them. Okay, so here are three scores that get us into each percentile. Now, percentiles, right? That's just really bad. So bad, let's forget it. So, the 75th percentile is actually right here. Percentiles are calculated to be how far, how much you're greater than. You're greater than 75%, so this is the 75th percentile at 0.75. Here's the 90th at 0 0.90, and here's the 98th at 0.98. So the area under the curve for a 75th percentile, you don't need to change anything, right? Percentiles are given to you. The only time you're really changing it is when, you're, if it's when it says top 10, top 15, top 20%. That's when you have to switch it to the bottom. But percentiles are given to you in the correct way that your calculator will calculate it correctly. So you should get 24, 27, and 31. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll talk about it in class next time. So take care.